What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. I'm very glad that you are here. It is week two of Pizza Month, and you might be saying right now, I don't know what the lobby is, much less Pizza Month. Mm -hmm. One of them is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like you can figure out. We're eating pizza this month. We are. Yeah. The lobby is just kind of where we hang out before the service gets started, like you would if you went to a uh, physical church, and there's the lobby or the, the foyer if you foyer. are Lutheran, foyer, or if fancy Lutheran. in the 90s, foyer if you're yeah, very <laughs> fancy. <laughs> uh, so we just hang out for a bit before the service gets started in about 10 minutes. We have a really awesome service. New series starting today. What's it called, Michael? Who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Michael normally says it like, who am I? And it's fantastic. I can't do it right now. But his, he lost his voice from all of his sanging. And, a, and so a little bit of a cold. I, I covered for you. And a little bit of a cold. Mm. All of the above. Could you please cover for him by uh, I think it, actually singing? I think the, I just did. But we need it three no, times. I think I, I think I, Michael will sing it for us later in the service. Yeah. I think probably not as, make that happen. Probably just out as good the, as I did Out right in the now. woods. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, Michael <clears throat> is my guest today. Hello Michael everyone. Beers. You are the worship person, tech human. You do a lot of stuff. I do things. With music and tech. I do things here. And celebrations mm -hmm. that are weekly. Yeah. I think I nailed it. Yep. Uh, that was a very good <coughs> introduction. Thank you. When <laughs> thank you, you said celebrations, I'm like, has Michael been partying, plan planning parties? <laughs> <laughs> partying, planning. <laughs> uh, that I didn't know about. Uh, Pastor Hattie is on producer cam today. Hello. Hello. You've already nailed it. You caught like a major error in technology yeah, really that would have caused us to have to re-record this. I'm very good at producing, except for I had to use my watch as a timer today. Mm, and instead true. of like just putting on um, like a stopwatch where it counts up, it's counting down. Oh, so nice. it might so go an off. alarm's gonna go <laughs> it off. It might go off. <coughs> I mean, so you know, one pro, if, one con. You know, if you wouldn't have caught that crucial error, that we would have had to get more pizza. Uh, exactly. I was so. th that's exactly what I was thinking too. <laughs> I'm actually furious that she caught it because we would have so been like, sorry. I guess we got to go get another pizza. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And we would have made you buy, since you're the tech human. Yeah. Man. Come on, Hattie. Next time. I'll, I'll, next time I will accidentally sure. it up. Yeah. This, this might be Hattie's only appearance during Pizza Month. We might have you back on one other time. Okay. But Hattie is a well-known hater of pizza. I'm not a hater of pizza. Which is the most mm -hmm. ridiculous I just don't thing like I've ever heard in mm -hmm. my entire life. It's, 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 it's fine. I just don't really want to eat it. <laughs> Like, if you were like, what should we do? I don't for lunch hate that today? food. I just really don't want to eat <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. <clears throat> Michael is a well known lover of pizza. I yes. love pizza. As am I. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think we probably look forward to pizza month more than any month we've done, the two of us. Absolutely. Is this the first pizza month? This is the first pizza that month. That is actually shocking yeah. because you guys do love pizza so much. I don't, I, I don't know if I've oh, talked oh. about it before on the lobby, but for my, th was it my 30th birthday? Or no, 30. Yeah, it must have been my 30th birthday. We were in Oklahoma, and Joanna, for my birthday, gave me pizza, pizza week. And for seven That's days, cool. we went and got different pizzas. That's so a amazing. couple times, it was like we got it and had it at home, but there were so many, like, shockingly amazing pizza culture in Oklahoma City. And so mm. we, we went to different pizza places every day, and it was glorious. Did you cry when she, you <laughs> she got you for your birthday? Yeah, I was weeping openly. <laughs> yeah. I felt a little sick on day seven, mm -hmm. I feel like, mm. but it was worth it. Mm. Sick because it was ending. I needed, yeah. I needed like a full day with no pizza. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then I was back on pizza mm. almost immediately. Just one day break, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was great. Mm. It was a great gift. Shout out to Joanna and an idea for all of you. I'm actually, uh, maybe Melissa, we'll save Melissa. it for when, yeah. M Melissa, Melissa, if you're watching, maybe an idea. <laughs> that was the one perk of where we live. Like, right, you yeah. know, we, uh, like we didn't, have, we weren't doing like frozen pizzas and, yeah. or just like, you know, Domino's or what or whatever. Yeah. Like we were able to go to like really cool local pizza places with unique pizzas and different experiences. Not gas station pizza. Great. No. However, some gas stations have great pizza. Mm -hmm. Great segue, Pastor Hattie. Yeah, you got it. Uh, for instance, <laughs> Casey's General Store. <clears throat> oh yeah. Has some of the best pizza you will find. Uh, it, mm -hmm. in like like, in terms of a chain place, their pizza is incredible. Yep, it is. Their breakfast Patty. pizza. Oh my mm -hmm. word. Speaking You've of, that, I have had it. I, I feel so like good. I don't have a lot to contribute <clears throat> so today because I don't love pizza, but Casey's. I have had Casey's pizza. Yeah. We made a special stop one time when we were working at a different 
location. I won't talk, tell you what we were working at. Th thank you for not talking about camp. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Even though you were talking about camp. Our boss <laughs> also loved Casey's yeah. Pizza. Okay. I think we stopped at like 6 a.m. Like it felt it was so early, <laughs> early to get gas station pizza. It was wonderful. If you've ever driven through Iowa. I have. You've probably driven by 165 Casey's General stores in every yeah. little town. But it's good. It's legitimately good pizza. We didn't have come and goes in Minnesota or mm -hmm. Oklahoma. But they're here. And their pizza, it's not quite Casey's level, but it's pretty good. It is. <clears throat> and this week is breakfast pizza week. Yes. I'm pretty excited about it. We had to call and order special. We did. Because get your ham off of our pizza. That's right. <clears throat> their ham has no place on pizza. Amen. True. Ham has no place in my life at all. Except but for Easter. Especially in like, pizza. I like ham. <clears throat> But not on pizza. You do like ham, but yeah, not not on pizza. What is it? So oh, I think it's time to dive in. We've got eggs, cheese, other cheese, sausage, and bacon. Yes. I don't know what what do they use for the sauce. I think it's gravy. Is I'm it gravy? Sure, okay. I th if it's not gravy, it's worth eating. For breakfast pizza, sometimes sometimes they'll go with a cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. Sure. Which is fine, but when they go with gravy. Yep. That's the way they know to go. what they're doing. Want to grab the napkins, Michael? Yes. Uh, I, as we <clears throat> as we said last week, I hope that you're joining us for Pizza Month, even if you're attending the 9:30 service right now. That's why we have breakfast pizza today. <laughs> it's perfect. I feel like people who are joining with us live well, or anytime, like they want to go get pizza right now. Like, I remember. I, like, pause. I'm going to quick get pizza and come back. Would you? Uh, we need you to come get your I have to your slice. Go get it. I'm eating yeah. this pizza. Okay. Yep. You don't have to eat it all. I'll eat whatever. Yeah. <laughs> We're both okay if you only have part of one slice. Um, <laughs> but I think it's a cheese sauce. I think they. I think is their it? sauce is a cheese sauce. I'm trying to remember what month we did where, like, a bunch of people in the chat were, like, like getting e extreme cravings for the things we were having. I don't think it was ice cream though. Was it it hot was dish month? hot dish month. It might have been I hot. Guess. It might have been hot dish month. Did we do like a donut month? Do you guys see what my pizza went? We did pie, pie, month. pie month. It might have been pie month. Did you just throw your pizza on the ground? <laughs> yes, you did. I really wish that was on camera. <laughs> Quit disrespecting <Classic>. our pizza. <laughs> it, is, it is pizza I'm month, so Patty. Sorry. Uh, I will say, I'm not crazy about pizza, but I like breakfast pizza more than regular oh. pizza. Uh, while Michael and I start eating our pizza, will yeah. you tell us why you like breakfast pizza more? Yeah, Cheers. I will actually, Cheers, because mm -hmm. um, it's uh, one of our family traditions. Is we have breakfast pizza on Christmas Day. We get mm. up, we make breakfast pizza, and the kind that we make is much better after it's cold, which is weird because like usually pizza you want like hot, like fresh out of the oven. But this one is really good when you leave it sit for a little bit. Interesting. Maybe sometime I'll make it for you guys and you can experience uh, there's a, a breakfast pizza. There's a comedian that has a great bit about people who claim they like cold pizza more. I think it's John Heffron. But his, and his daughters claim they like cold pizza more than hot pizza. Mm -hmm. And he just goes on like a classic dad rant about how, no, you're just too lazy to reheat the pizza. <laughs> Nobody calls the pizza place and asks if they have any pizzas that have been laying around for 12 hours and if they could <laughs> deliver them with the air conditioning blasting on them. And I, uh, that's how I feel about people who yeah. claim it's better cold. Not all pizza. Most pizza okay. are way better hot. So it's but a this homemade one, breakfast pizza. This one pizza is much What's better. on your homemade breakfast pizza? It's croissant rolls on the bottom. And then uh, sausage, uh, um, what's a good <coughs> Jimmy Dean sausage, and some uh, peppers, and some mushrooms. And then you take eggs, and you scramble them up, and then you dump it on the top, and then you bake it. So it's not a pizza, but it's it does pizza. sound wonderful. It is pizza. Sounds pretty great. I think you should make it for us for Pizza Month. We'll see what we'll Maybe see we'll what extend happens. Pizza Month one week into November. I I, I don't know. We can, <laughs> so that Hattie we can, can make that happen. Because we already have all the other days planned. It is a breakfast pizza, though. That's fine. But it's a homemade breakfast pizza. Mm. So we'll just stagger it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll have an off-air production meeting. Gotcha. At, at that point, though, we might as well bring back the other cool. one that we replaced. That's a good point. We might as well have a two-month-long so, <laughs> pizza two months. You guys are going to do pizza month between now and December. Like, once Christmas rolls around, we're like, okay. No, we'll t we're going to take a break for Thanksgiving. Oh, of what do you guys think about like a full Thanksgiving feast for the lobby mm -hmm. this year, <laughs> the week of Thanksgiving? I'm, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I knew you would be in. Yeah. You don't have to ask me. I think that's a good gonna, idea. I'm going to set up cameras at your house and yes, lay the spread this out. This is a great idea. <laughs> do we just have a lobby where we're all eating Thanksgiving together? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good idea. Man, I'm excited for Thanksgiving. I want to keep eating this. Is your alarm going off? No, but oh. it's about to. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll pause it so it doesn't go off. That was me. I, I just looked over and Hattie's. In fact, I hope we can clip, <laughs> we can cut to her what she was doing. 
<laughs> well, you said Michael cued you without saying anything, and so I was trying I to did. do that, and it mm. didn't work. Michael's a very excellent producer. <clears throat> I have a lot of practice. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You're usually over here with me. You, not that you never produce, but especially since we added the producer as timer. We used to, like, mm -hmm. have, I just had to keep an eye on it myself, mm -hmm. which was clearly way too much for me, <laughs> emo emotionally and physically. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for taking that off my plate. You got it. Um, thank you for Pizza Month. I believe Michael is the one who suggested, maybe, I don't know, one of us suggested it. It was probably. You definitely pushed for it. Yes. So we, whoever brought it up first, I love Pizza Month. I'm going wonderful. to. Uh, I just want to keep eating. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue attacking this pizza here in a minute. But uh, church family, we love you very much, mm -hmm. and we're very glad that you're here. And we really do have an awesome service today, not just because of Michael singing later on, both here right now but and in our recording when he actually <laughs> sings the song for real. Um, but it's, it's going to be a really, really cool series called Who Am I, where we're going to talk mm -hmm. a lot about our identity. We're kind of going through the story of Joseph yeah. um, <clears throat> and talking about our identity in God. And so it's going to be a really cool series. I strongly suggest that you make sure you're here for every week of it, be inviting people. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really cool. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Thanks. Thank you, Hattie. You got it. Uh, what did you think of the pizza real quick? It's, it's not bad. It's got <laughs> bacon and uh, yeah. it's breakfast. I don't need so. the bacon, personally. I, mm. I could have done without it. Yeah, but. it would have been better if it was just sausage, really? which, which Michael and I both preferred, but we knew you were going to be here and you... Yeah. Prefer the bacon on we there. Sacrificed. So, yeah, we added bacon on Thank it just guys. for you. That's so kind. Uh, but it's pretty good. The eggs on there are nice. Yeah, I like it. Come and go has a good crust, so that yeah. helps. So yeah, it's solid. It's a solid. <laughs> I'll eat it pizza. again. Yeah, I guess I will go eat the rest of this pizza. Oh my gosh. Now. <laughs> Do we need to have like a pizza bracket of which one of our pizza month is? I think best? that's something for you to work on next. Okay, you got for it. next week. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. You can do that behind the scenes since you don't want to eat the pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Hattie. Thank you, Michael. Thanks to all of you. We love you, New Hope family, and we will see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Our new series, Who Am I, is kicking off. We're going to be talking about our identity, who we are in Jesus. It's going to be really, really cool. I'm really excited. Really good. And yep. Michael is leading a song he called is. Who Am I? He, he also says, Who Am I? Very cool. He does. Maybe later in the service, we'll get him to mention the name of the, of the series, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Yeah. I, I think it should be like an every week thing. Great idea. Once you guys hear it, let us know if post, you think it Yeah, should then be post in the chat and demand yep. that Michael says, Who Am I? a lot. Yes. Yep. But before Pastor Mark comes out for a great message, uh, we have a time of worship for you all, so we hope that you join us for worship today. Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you, and to know so little else I need. Oh, how I need you, oh, how I need you, oh, how I need you.
we'll go where you shine Break the dawn, crack the skies Make the way bright before me In your light, I will find all I need All I need is you Light, glorious light I will go where you shine Break the dawn, crack the skies Make the way bright before me In your light, I will find all I need
draw me close And you are the one who will sing over me I'll never grow faint and never weary Mighty God of love You quiet me with your love So I run to you Well, again, church, we're so happy that you joined us today. And in just a little bit, Pastor Mark's going to come out and kick off our Who Am I series. Wait, Michael, you have to, I, I told them maybe you would say, <laughs> Who Am I, like introducing the cool series. <laughs> like I've done it in person or uh, with you guys. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can today. My voice is struggling, but You we'll could see. just try it. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> that was it. beautiful. Thank you. Ra rock that's, is applause from all, all thing, yes, yeah. for all the people Thank you everyone people. for clapping for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, we just want to bring some highlights to you today. Mm -hmm. First off, we have our kids service. Uh, it's a great way for your children to engage in a service that's for them. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, grab a second device, click the link in the chat, and then they can watch that. And then you get to focus on the service that's yes. designed for you. Yes. And uh, also coming up in the chat right now is a link to our Connect card. And we want to encourage you to fill that out today. Uh, so maybe you fill that out every week or maybe you hear us talk about the connect card and you're like i don't want to fill that out yeah. but this is your week to do it uh yep. we we really consider you part of our church family we would love to just get to know your name uh, and you can let us know that by filling out the connect card also if you're joining with us live we do have that chat and we would love to be able to chat yeah. with you this morning chat with you today uh hear how your day is going uh, also we would love to be able to pray for you and so in the chat uh there's a place for live prayer and if you have a prayer request we have live hosts that would love to be able to pray with you yeah. right now you can click that It'll take you to a private chat. You can share your prayer requests and receive prayer right now. Yeah, and we want to continue worship by giving back to God his tithes and our offerings. And uh, we just want to say thank you to those of you that faithfully give. Mm -hmm. And uh, your your giving impacts our ministry here, mm -hmm. and, and it, which we're able to help people not just here in Williston, but all around the world. Yeah. So we thank you for that. And easiest ways to give, or the easiest way is to click the link in the chat. But then uh, if, you, if you go to our website, there's multiple ways you can do that. So we encourage you to do that today. Yes, in church, we would love to be able to pray for you right now. Also, I didn't mention this before. Uh, if, you, if you're not joining with us live, we still would love to pray for you. You can yep. put any prayer requests on a Connect card. Yeah. Our team prays over those every, every week because we really do believe in the power of prayer and bringing things before yeah. the Lord. So put that on your Connect card uh, and let's pray together now. God, thank you for uh, our church family, for those people who are joining with us uh, live right now. God, you know each person who is connecting with us today. Uh, you know every person who will connect with us throughout the week, Lord. Uh, and ultimately, Lord, you know all those people because they, they want to connect with you. God, they want to uh, go deeper in their relationship with you. They want to experience your presence. And so, God, uh, we just pray for all of those people, God, that, that are joining with us, uh, Lord, that are wanting uh, more from their relationship with you. And as we start this new series, God, I just pray uh, that you would uh, teach us and remind us about where our true identity lies. We know that there's so many different things in this world that uh, try to steal our identity, Lord, but we know that ultimately we are your sons and we are your daughters, and I pray that you would just remind us of that, God, and teach us what that means. Maybe some of us will hear that for the first time throughout this series, and I pray that we would really truly know what that means to be uh, your children and to be uh, your children that you love so much, God. Uh, so we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you that we can uh, learn from you no matter where we're at, that we can hear from you no matter where we're at, that we can pray to you, God, no matter what we've got going on around us, Lord. Uh, so yeah, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for the message we're about to hear. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't understand where your love comes from. Good to be with you again. We are starting a new series with this message here today. 
It's going to be taking a look at the life of Joseph and the different things that he faced in his life that affected his identity. So the whole series that we're looking at is, what is my identity? Who am I? From a child, you have identity that comes from your family of origin, and that we're gonna, that's what we're going to take a look at today. But all, throughout life, then when you're a teenager and in your 20s and trying to figure out who am I and who am I going to marry and what kind of job that I'm going to have, and somewhere along the line, you lose a job or maybe entirely change your career path to something different. And again, you're wrestling with who am I? You get married, figuring out, okay, who am I in this relationship? If you have kids, that's a whole new who am I in that kind of a setting. And even as you get older, you get to the point of an empty nest, and all of a sudden you're looking at your spouse going, okay, who are we without kids? Everything has been around our kids, and all of a sudden we've got to redefine who we are. And then you get to retirement. I've seen a lot of uh, guys especially, but anybody retiring and going, what is my role now? Who am I after all of this? Well, we're going to start with Joseph, take a look uh, at his early childhood and his place in the family. Because initially, our identi identity is determined by who the family says I am. So I want to read from Genesis chapter 37, starting with verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph, Israel was Joseph's dad, loved him more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him, couldn't even speak a kind word to him. And then Joseph had a dream. When he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Because he said to them, oh, listen to my dream that I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaves rose and stood upright while all of your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Oh, then, then he has another dream. And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. And when he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But his father kept the matter in mind. The first place that we have our identity is with our own families. And seeing how that all works out, how that plays out, how your parents treat you and what they think of you helps you to develop immediately, this is who I am, this must be who I am. You have brothers that come into siblings that affect all of that. Where your birth order is makes a difference in all of that. Studies show that even as an infant, the way that you are treated and the way that you are nurtured or cared for or loved for before you even realize what's going on helps to define who you are and how you act. One of my uh, sons and his wife adopted a little baby girl, which they got right at birth. But in that adoption, they were extremely careful when they were finally able to take her home, because she was in NICU and a lot of that stuff. When they were finally able to take her home, they just constantly were holding her as much as possible so that bonding could take place since she was not uh, their natural child. They wanted to make sure that that bonding took place. We're, the, the things we face in childhood just really impact who we are. If we went around the room and each of us were sharing stories of things that we remember as a kid, there are things that, that still we hurt over when we repeat them. There are things that still bother us. They make us into who we are, both good things and bad things. And we adapt to all of those things. If you're a family with a lot of conflict, you might take on the role of, oh, I've got to be the peacemaker. You carry that throughout your whole life. So every setting you're in, oh, it's my job to make peace with everybody. 
If you had a parent with a huge temper, then you learned to walk on eggshells and be completely careful to make sure that you don't make dad or mom mad. Um, you might hover over your kids because you've got a spouse that doesn't hover over them and is absentee, and so you feel it's your job to do all of that. My wife was a superwoman when it came to nurturing. I mean, she is the most nurturing person I have ever met in my life. So since she had that role, I kind of moved into, okay, I'm the stoic uh, disciplinarian, and I take care of that side of things. And it dawned on me, I don't know that my kids ever really saw the nurturing side, which you know isn't big, but there's still some nurturing side in me that I'm not sure they saw because I compensated by what was going on in my family. And we all take on different roles, different times, in different ways. So the question is then, what, what am I, who am I really? What does God have for me? And when am I really being my true self of who I am? Well, let's take a look at it. Joseph's dad, we're going to go back to taking a look at Joseph here. Joseph's dad, whose name was Israel, uh, also Jacob, defined his identity. He was the favorite son. Now, we hear a lot about dysfunctional families. You may feel like you came from a dysfunctional family. I've got news for you. I think all families are dysfunctional families because we're all imperfect people and we all do the <laughs> crazy thing is the way that life is set up, the way that God does this, does this in our lives is the people that are raising kids and impacting their lives the most are people in their 20s that have no clue what they're doing. Now, I think that's a good thing because I'm finding at my age, having little kids is exhausting and draining uh, when I'm around. Love them dearly, but whoa, I don't have the energy. And those in their 20s have the energy to do with it, but they're dumb. They just don't, they don't know what you're supposed to You, I was dumb when I was in my 20s and I'm raising these kids and trying to figure out how to do everything right. There's always some dysfunction. And in Joseph's family, oh my goodness, huge dysfunction. Whole weird backstory on that of, of his father, Jacob, also known as Israel, that loves this woman, is going to marry her, and somehow uh, his dad does a switcheroo in the wedding ceremony. I don't know. They must have had veils. I don't know how that even is possible. But there's a switch, and he gets the his uh, wife's sister instead of his, the gal that he was in love with. And so he ends up with two wives and, that are sisters. Now, you want to talk about dysfunctional, that is bizarre. Then you add to that whole thing that when they were unable to conceive, which was their value system of who am I, I'm only valuable if I conceive. When they couldn't conceive, then they give their, their servants concubines to them. So, so Jacob has like four wives, and so uh, he has 12 sons by these wives. Man, three sons was enough work for me. I don't think I did a great job with that. If I had 12, it would be bizarre. And so it was just this strange family. And to top that all off, Joseph was the one that was the favorite. He was the one who came late in his dad's life, came from the favored wife, the one that he, that he really loved. And so he got all of these benefits. This robe was given to him. No, none of the other boys got this special robe, whatever that was supposed to be. We call it robe of many colors. Some translations say an ornamented robe. All we know is that it meant he mattered and the other brothers didn't. So from his dad, who handled parenting very poorly, he has this identity that I am the favorite. My stepdad and my mom were working on a college campus, a small Christian college, and they were the campus shepherds, is what they called it, pastors, basically, to the students. And their home was between two uh, parts of the campus, so the students would walk by. If the light was on, then you knew you could stop in any time and you could get uh, double-stuffed Oreos and milk. I'm thinking, no way college kids are going to drop in on 80-year-old people to get 
cookies and milk. But they did all the time whenever that light was on. And what uh, Pop, my stepdad, would always say to them, every single one that came in, you know, you're my favorite. And I went to visit them, and I heard this happen several times, and I'm, I'm getting torqued by it. You cannot tell every kid on campus that he, is your, he or she is your favorite. And he just kind of looked at me, and he said, but they are all my favorites. Well, that is not the case for Joseph. He was the only favorite in all of that. So he had that definition of who am I? I'm the favored son. Then God began to work in his life and began to define who he was going to be eventually. He did it through dreams that were given to him. Now, in Mideastern culture, even today, dreams are very, very significant. I have dreams that are wild dreams and they never make sense and I don't remember them after I wake up because they, they made no sense whatsoever. But in this culture, dreams mattered and you'd interpret them and try to figure it out. You read through the Bible, you see that lots of times, where this dream needs to be interpreted. We had this dream, and it's got to mean something, and it usually does mean something significant. God gives dreams. He gave them to Joseph. The dream was that basically all the sheaves are out there binding the sheaves, and, and all of them fall down to his, and what it means is you all are going to going to not worship me, but follow me. I'm going to be the ruler. And the rest of you are going to be submissive to me. And then he has a, another one. He tells it to his brothers, and they, of course, hate him for the whole thing because they already hate the guy. And then they add this other dream that God, God gives to him, defining who he's going to be. Who am I? God says, you're going to be a ruler. And the sun and the moon, representing mom and dad, and the 11 stars, representing the brothers, they're all going to bow down to you. And over and over again, we see their response is they absolutely hate him because of these dreams. Early on in life, and it could be while you're a child, could be as a teenager, could be in your 20s, God gives dreams to us. Now, the challenge is figuring out what are my dreams and what are God's dreams. Now, I never, ever had any interest uh, in sports whatsoever. I didn't like watching them, didn't like playing them. And when you're a teenager, that's kind of an important thing when you're in phys ed and they're trying to get you to join up the teams and all of that. I, didn't, I, would, I just didn't have an interest in it. And when I finally started getting an interest in it, I was so far behind the other guys. I mean, I could not, could not figure out how the ball hits your hand and you close at the same time. I mean, I just cannot do both of those things. I can let it hit my hand, get it in the way, or I can close my hand, but I can't do them both at the same time. Anyway, I had this dream when I was in high school, and the expectation was every guy in our small school would play sports, and I wasn't playing sports. That someday I'm going to go out for this sport, which doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to do the winning touchdown or the basket that wins the game, and they're all going to see me as a jock, and I, I never even joined a team. It was totally my dream. It was not a God thing. It was just I wanted to feel better about myself, and that was, that was my dream. It's hard to tell what's God, God's dream for you and what is my own dream of just what I wish would happen, what would make me feel better in all of that. I found one way that you can tell if it's God's dream or if it's your dream, if you can let it go. If you can relinquish that dream and give it back to God, usually somewhere in the process, even when you're convinced it's supposed to happen, you got to let the dream be God's. Otherwise, it's all about you, and you got to make it happen. And it ceases to be God's dream. It becomes my dream and what I want and what I expect in all of that. Now, Joseph handled that dream very poorly. I mean, both of these dreams, what does he do? He goes to his brothers and says, Oh, let me tell you about my dream. I had this dream, and this is what you're going to do, and I'm the hero. Uh, he's the hero of all of his stories, the hero of all of his dreams. I try not to do that as a pastor because I tell 
personal stories of what's going on. And I've heard pastors that they are always the hero of the story. They figured it out and they did, and that just annoys me. I try not to do that because you get kind of the reaction that, that Joseph got here is, okay, we don't want to hear about how great you are and how wonderful you're doing everything. And so he blurts out his dreams to his brothers, gets a totally negative reaction in the whole thing. But those dreams, we'll see by the time we get to the end of Joseph's life, those dreams were from God. And it was God saying, this is who you are. This is who you're going to be. And so God had a plan. Jacob, his father, had an identity for him. God gives him this identity. Nothing is happening towards that identity. Then you have Joseph's brother define his identity as well. Their whole idea, in fact, three times it told us, verse 4, verse 5, verse 11, over and over again, it says, and they hated him, and they hated him. Can you imagine growing up in a family where all your siblings hate you? Uh, You may have been there. It may be part of your backstory of what has gone on in your life that there are those that don't support the dream. Now, obviously, Joseph was not bright in sharing the dream, but when he did, they were so critical and so negative about the whole dream in the first place. But not just that, they were negative about him. They wanted him to understand you have no value. You are not important. You think you're somebody, but you are really nobody. Later on, we're going to see how they react and what they do about it. But when God gives you dreams and he says, this is who you are, you're going to find people that are going to say, no, no, that's not from God. Hold on to some of those dreams. Do not blurt them out to everybody that you run into, especially if you're the hero in all of those dreams. You don't need to be advertising that. But don't give up on that dream. You see, relinquishing it to God, letting him have that, is not saying I give up on the dream. It's saying, this dream is not about me, and I don't have to make it happen. If this is a God thing, God is going to make that happen in my life. So he has these conflicting things. He's got what his dad says about him. Your identity is you're the favorite. What his brothers are saying about him, you are nothing and we want nothing to do with you. And then what God is saying about him and planting these dreams in his life that there's no way this is going to happen. I mean, you can't even imagine. There's no way he could imagine what his life was going to be like, just like you can't imagine what your life is going to be like 20 years from now, what God is going to be doing and what he's going to be accomplishing. So you have all of these different identities coming from you from the time you're an infant through your childhood, through your teen years. And I want you to know all of those things influence who you are. Every one of your experiences, the good ones, the bad ones. But what God is in the business of doing is taking those things and making good out of them. Even the most tragic things, and again, we'll look at that in Joseph's life following through, God is taking those awful, wrong, terrible things and he turns them around for good. God does that. His identity is who he says you are. So all these other things influence who you are, but they do not define who you are. You let God define who you are. You don't know what that looks like. You don't know what that means. But God's in the business of doing that. Let God define you. Let him take stuff that is even bad. And and I, I admit, I don't know, but I admit that there are things probably in your life that have defined you in some ways that you've allowed to become your identity, that this is who I am because somebody else said that's who I am. That is not who God says you are. And as we go through this study together, 
each time through the, the tragedies of life, of Joseph's life, the successes of Joseph's life, the disappointments, the way that people hurt him, going through temptation, all the stuff that he faced, we will see who God says he is and who he makes him to be. You will choose whether or not to let him. Well, hey, church, we hope that you found today's message valuable and that it encourages you to take a next step. Yeah, a next step that we always talk about no matter what series we're in, but now we're in this Who Am I series and, and it's going to be really great. But we also have a podcast that's going through a study on the book of Romans right now. It's called The Grow Podcast. You might have checked it out in the past. Uh, in the past, we used to dive a little bit deeper into the messages. Right now, we're going through the book of Romans and it's been so good. Pastor Leo is leading that study. Really encourage you to check it out. New episodes go up every single Monday. You can find it on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Really, really encourage you to check it out. A great way to continue to grow throughout where the you, week. Where are you guys at in Romans? You've we, really been going through it slowly, like diving in. Yeah, uh, I think we would have we'll, we'll have just finished. We've recorded a few in advance, okay. so I'm always trying to remember which one is oh, about yeah. to go up. I think we're in chapter nine now. Okay. And you can always go back and catch up on, on the previous weeks that you missed. Read along with us. It's been really, really fun so far. Yeah, so make sure you check that out. Also, come back next week. We always encourage you to come back because the series will continue to build on itself mm -hmm. as we read about Joseph. Yeah. And we want to encourage you to invite, invite a friend, something we talk about every week because we just know it's so important uh, to have the lost people be found people. Yep. So invite a friend, a coworker, a family member, is super easy. You can just send them the link to the service uh, so that they can hear scripture, spend time in worship. Uh, so make sure you're inviting people. Come back next week. It's going to be another great uh, series. 9 30, 11 15, if you join us with us live. And now we don't leave the church, we get to go and be the church.